last week we, we started our, our study on the Great Tribulation, and we began looking at the uh, seven seals of judgment, where we got into, you know, the, the Antichrist shows up uh, with the world peace. We had a war uh, came about. We had famine uh, coming about. We had the, the picture in heaven about the, the saints uh, under the altar, the, the martyrs, right, asking God for, for, for uh, basically justice for their lives. Um, we have all of these pictures that we went through, kind of the silence in heaven was the, was the last judgment. And basically what you get out of the seven, uh, the seven seals is just the world basically just barreling towards horrible judgment. Um, there's already been a, just a crazy amount of life, crazy earthquakes, just anarchy, and it's, it's just been a horrible time. But remember, the last judgment was silence in heaven. And, and basically what ends up happening is we can go, we can kind of go there just to understand what we were looking at last week. Under the seventh seal, um, the prayers of the saints are, are basically offered up, right? And, and all of the prayers of all of the saints who suffered injustice, and the Bible says that the angel offers it with the incense and it goes up before God and they take the fire from the altar and throw the fire uh, mingled with, with blood and all this stuff down to the earth and there's thunderings and lightnings and earthquake and it's just, it's, it's a horrible time, right? But then we get to the next set of judgments. In chapter number 8, we begin the trumpet judgments. The trumpet judgments. Now, I want to define really what the trumpet judgments are so that we can kind of understand why it's important here, okay? Trumpets in the Bible were appointed for calling as an alarm or for public notification. Trumpets were blown in days of celebration, okay? They were used to gather everyone for war, but they were also used to advise, hey, take warning, Something is happening, right? Alert in the camp. Blow the trumpets, okay? And when you study these seven trumpets, okay, you have something very interesting here. You have the first four trumpets, which are horrible, okay? But then you have the last three trumpets, okay? So there's seven in total. Four are bad. But then the last three are different from the, from the first four. They're called the woe judgments or the, the woe trumpets. Because when we think about woe, it means that things are, are really getting horrible. Like, it's just progressing worse and worse, okay? So, we're going to get into this tonight. Let's have just an opening word of prayer, and we'll kind of jump into our Bible study. All right, let's pray. Father, we ask you to be with us tonight, God, that you would give us the wisdom and the help that we need. Lord, I pray that you would uh, fill me with thy spirit, and I pray that everything that would be uh, said, thought, and, and given tonight would be well-pleasing to Christ. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's take our Bibles tonight and go to Revelation chapter number 8, please. Revelation chapter number 8. And we'll go ahead and read through um, these trumpets here, okay? So we just read in chapter 8 about the last seal, okay? And let's go to verse number 6. Revelation chapter 8, verse number 6. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed, uh, followed hail, and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees uh, was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. The second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it uh, were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld uh, and, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven with a loud voice, Whoa! 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 To the inhabitants of earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Hey! Hey, y'all, you think it's bad? Listen! Listen! Warning! Warning! It's about to get even worse! Uh, go to chapter number uh, 9. 
And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven uh, to the earth, and uh, to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, uh, as the smoke of the great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and, uh, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And that's to sting, right? And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the, uh, the grass of the earth, neither any uh, green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God on their foreheads. And to them was given that they should not kill men, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it strikes the man. And in those days men shall seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads uh, were as it uh, were a crown of gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their winging was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were uh, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which was the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, and that means destruction or destroyer. Uh, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and heard, and I heard a voice uh, from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were uh, prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses of the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and, and Jacob and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by these there, were, uh, there was a third part of the men killed by, uh, by fire and by smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power was in their mouth and in their tails, and in their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads uh, with them, uh, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by the plagues, yet repented not for the works which their hands, that they uh, should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, and, and of their, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And then you get into this uh, chapter 10 where it talks about uh, the little book, and then you get into uh, the, the, the two witnesses here, uh, and then you get to verse number 15 of chapter number 11, if you'll flip over there. This is the seventh trumpet, okay? And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and hast to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, uh, the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name, uh, sh uh, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and earthquake and the great hail. So the seven trumpets, the seven trumpets, what do the seven trumpets signify in the way of judgments? Now, things have been bad. Things are getting worse. Like I said, it's, it's progressing in God's anger and God's judgment, okay? The first trumpet, when we get into Revelation chapter 8, verse number 6, 
we learn that God starts off destroying the third part of the trees. Green grass, burned all by fiery hail. That's a third part. That's a, that's a lot of land, okay? You know, when you think about this, this is a time we just read about God's, God's people have offered up their prayers for justice. And it seems that many of them, like we said last week, died not seeing justice on this earth. They, they died as innocent lambs to the slaughter, right? They, they died as offerings poured out before the Lord. But we just read how, how the angel has offered their prayers right, to God. And it's interesting here that these people who prayed for justice and resolution from this wicked world, these people who have died not seeing their prayers uh, for justice met, are now seeing their prayers that they lifted towards God are touched by fire in the altar of heaven. These, these prayers have been thrown back down to earth. We have hail mixed with blood from heaven falling upon the heads of the wicked, and they start to burn up the, the earth's vegetation as a judgment on it. You know, some people think that John is seeing some type of nuclear fallout from, from these visions here. I, I don't honestly... I don't know. I don't believe that. I believe these are special signs in the heaven to show people, hey, God is really, really upset. You need to repent. And notice they don't repent, right? That, that's that first trumpet. The second trumpet uh, in Revelation chapter 8, and verses 8 and 9, God continues to rain his judgment from heaven. I believe he sends an asteroid. And the Bible tells us that a third part of the sea becomes blood, killing all aquatic life and destroying many, many ships. The shipping industry, if you will, is basically tanked, if I can use that pun, okay? They, they're done, okay? Um, and what I found is, it, you know, if, if it's an asteroid that causes this ecological worldwide disaster, come to find out, scientists believe that a worldwide ecological disaster has happened before. I have a direct quote, quote, researchers today say that this sort of phenomenon has happened many times in history on earth, sometimes resulting in a great ecological upheaval and disaster. So a star falls from heaven, right? An asteroid, something that, that, that hits in, in the worst possible time, in the worst possible place, and basically marine life is decimated, shipping is decimated. I mean, they're already struggling to get things across continents, right, because of food shortages and war, and now it starts to add up even more, right? This great eco ecological disaster. And then, this is going to be a very short message tonight, then we get to the third trumpet, which is Revelation chapter uh, 8, verses uh, 10 to 11. Judgment then falls upon the rivers and the fountains of waters. And the fresh water is made so bitter, people will die because of it. You know, I've had some nasty water before in my life. Some of the nastiest water I've ever had is in one of my favorite places I've been. Uh, there was a there was a church in uh, in South Texas um, that invited Carrie and I out to look at the church, and you know we had a great time. People were loving best Mexican food I ever had in my life, and then uh, you know they, they were so gracious in putting us up and in some missionary housing, and they took care of things, and they just loved on us. Okay, and I'm prefacing that because I want to be I want to be honest about an experience. And then we turned on the water, and it smelled like rotten eggs. I mean, to take a shower, you jump in, you, you, you try to clean yourself as quick as possible, hold it in your nose, and you get out, and it's, oh, oh, it's so gross, the most rotten eggs, sulfur water. And, and, and I, I didn't want to touch the water, I drank bottled water, that's just me, right? That's, that's, I don't want to drink sulfur water, you keep that nasty stuff away from me, praise the Lord, right? But you think about it. Such a horrible ecological disaster hits the pure waters and the springs. And this is all divine judgment from God, right? You know, you think about this. You know, I've heard a story, of, and this was years ago, about, uh, about a very simple man who, who was saved. He had gotten saved, and he was just a mountain dweller. I think it may have been in West Virginia. And he had a, a shack. He didn't have any money. But he was so happy, and he, he rejoiced so much that his little shack was built by a fresh water spring. And that though he was the poorest of the poor, didn't, you know, wasn't bathing all the time because he just, you know, was like that once a week type thing. If that, I mean, just the I mean, just below poverty, third world poverty mountain dweller. This was years ago. But he was just so happy 
that God had blessed him with a sweet spring of water by his house. And I wonder how many people during that time of tribulation will lose a lot of the creature comforts, but still be able to, on those rough days, experience the joy of the Lord, and it's his blessings, excuse me, when they get to have a nice cool glass of water and just enjoy the refreshing taste of that. And the Lord is turning up the persecution, and now he sends divine judgment from heaven and takes that creature comfort away from them. He's stripping them of their blessings, he's, and people are dying. They're, they're, they're dying of thirst because the water is so terrible. People cannot drink it. They probably would, 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 would spit up just by just trying to drink it. I mean, that's, that's, that's how horrible the judgment is. That's that, that's that, uh, next, uh, that's that next judgment. The uh, fourth judgment is the judgment upon the sun, the moon, the stars. Uh, this is a plague in heaven, okay? The sun is going to lessen its light. One third of the day and the night are plunged into absolute darkness. And let me tell you something, it's going to be terrifying. You're going to look outside and it's going to be black as sin. And you're like, this should be the best time of the day. This is when I get my light. And there's, there's a, a good part of the day and a good part of the night where it plunges into a darkness that we have never seen. And this is all spiritual judgment. And God is, is blowing these trumpets. You know, he's trying to give warnings to the people to repent. And the Bible says that they're refusing, right? They're refusing to listen to these uh, trumpets. You know, the, and, and let me say it like this. You know, the Bible does speak about uh, to preachers to cry aloud, to spare not like a trumpet. And I want to, you know, I, there have been times, my friends, where, where I feel like the Lord has given a divine truth and, and I'm just trying to preach the word. And, and sometimes I don't have the wisdom of a man's words and I'm very rough in speech like Paul talks about. And it's almost just like my heart is crying out like a trumpet to people. And I've seen people in church services who, who, who are under conviction and know that they, they need to be saved. And, and the trumpet of the word of God is being proclaimed. And they're white knuckling the bench because they will not refuse. Uh, they will not accept, excuse me, and they are refusing the gospel message. And at the same time, I've also seen people under that same type of preaching sit there. I don't care anything you have to say. I don't believe that. I don't believe the Word of God. I don't believe I need salvation. And the trumpet is being sounded to them. And just like these people, isn't it interesting? They refuse to repent. You know, the people who refuse to repent at the sounding of the trumpet of the preached Word of God, interestingly, are the same type of people who refuse to repent when the trumpets of God's judgment blow in the end times. Isn't that an interesting correlation, right? So you know what your heart should be saying? If you're lost... If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I need to respond to the trumpeting of the Word of God tonight. That I need to repent and ask the Lord to be my Savior. That, that would be a warning. Uh, listen to this trumpet before you have to hear, hear the next one. Amen? So that's, that's the fourth trumpet, okay? World absolute darkness. Then you get to the fifth trumpet. This is where we start getting into the whoa, whoa. Hey, whoa, everyone listen. This is really bad. In Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, this probably is, to me, the scariest part of the book of Revelation, other than the great white throne judgment for lost people, okay? The idea is hellish creatures are loosed to torment the wicked for five months. The Bible says that people will try to kill themselves, but they will not die. Death will actually flee from them. And we learn that these creatures are led or controlled by the devil, the angel of the bottomless pit. You know, let me give a parenthetical here. There are people who are not dispensationalists. There are people who don't believe in premillennialism and pre-tribulation. That's fine. They can believe whatever they want. As one preacher said, you can be wrong if you want to. Amen. But, you know, people will say, well, you know, these creatures, you know, John was just seeing, you know, attack helicopters. That's what it was. And I was thinking about this. You know, whenever you see military engagements that they capture on night camp and you have these Apache helicopters, come in and they shoot, you know, uh, 50 cal rounds at people and they, and they shoot rockets at people and missiles at people, right, or whatever they shoot. I, I don't, you know, I see people dying because of that. I don't see people who they're shot with a 50 cal or they're, they're, they're shot with a machine gun, if you will, and they just start walking around. Hey, I can't die. It's, it's not talking about helicopters. These are real 
hellish creatures that are loosed from the bottomless pit. They're loosed from hell, these creatures. And they're, they're given to the world to, to torment, not kill, but to torment people for five months. And, and these are not... These are not uh, these are not locusts, right? Like we would we would see locusts, but the, but John is giving this visual description of these demonic hordes released upon men. And interestingly enough, you know, the hundred and forty four thousand the Bible talks about with God's seal on them, God's preachers during that time, these virgin Jewish men that are sent out to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. All those people who are saved, all of those people who accept the word of the gospel that's preached during the, the tribulation, all those who have not heard and they believe, who are sealed with, with God's with God's seal, not the devil's, uh, not the devil's mark, right? The, the, the antichrist mark. Those people who are sealed are exempt from this torment. But the people who reject God, the people who accept the antichrist as their false messiah, God, God releases something that terrifies them and and comes after them. And they are so terrified. They are so, they are so just overwhelmed. They try to escape by killing themselves. As we say, they leap from the frying pan into the fire. What they're trying to. But a judgment for God is God will not let people die during that time. I've thought over the years reading this passage about. I wonder what will happen if people will try to jump off buildings to escape these hellish creatures and hit the bottom. And suffer all the broken bones and suffer all the, the issues, but God will not let them die. And they will still have to suffer. People try to hang themselves to get rid, you know, try to overdose, try to shoot themselves. God is not, and this is a divine judgment. God is not going to let them die. They are going to suffer those five months. You know, and I also have to think about this when you study these, you study these creatures who are released from hell. You know, the Bible does say in Isaiah that hell from beneath thee is moved. The, the dead, I think it says that the dead are moved to greet thee. I, I forget the exact, uh, the exact uh, verbiage in the scriptures, but I've heard stories of people who, you know, from preachers, and I, I've read this book called Last Words of Saints and Sinners, of people who do not know the Lord who have died and who have screamed, who have sat up in bed screaming as they died, as, as things coming to get them. I don't know if those are the same creatures that are coming to get people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ and dragging them into hell. I don't know what it is, but the angel, the, the, this fallen angel, the devil, is given a key to open hell. He's given it. He's allowed under the providence and the authority of God to open it for the purpose of judgment. Uh, for the purpose of judgment, what a scary... And then no, no wonder the, the, the angel went around saying, whoa, 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 hey, y'all need to listen, right? Not only are they in darkness now because of this uh, trumpet judgment on the fourth trumpet, but the fifth judgment, you have these demonic creatures, and for five months, total freedom to punish people. People will not be uh, able to escape, and their leader is the devil himself. That's scary, man. That's another thing. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to call upon Him now so that you are in Christ and you are out of this world and not, and not suffering through any of the stuff that we're speaking about tonight. Then we get to the sixth trumpet. This is another woe judgment. The Bible talks about four bound uh, angels or demons, I believe, that are loosed from the Euphrates to kill a third part of the men on earth. A lot of people believe this also can be uh, referred to as a great army uh, that is turned loose on the earth with destructive force. You know, what's interesting is if you study the, air, the Euphrates and the area around that, you find a couple of interesting things out of the book of Genesis. You find that around Euphrates, you have the first murder. That's Genesis chapter number, or you have the first sin, excuse me. That's Genesis chapter 2. You have the first murder in Genesis chapter 4, 16. You have the first organized result against God in Genesis 11. You have the first war. You have the first dictatorship. That's Genesis 14, Genesis 10. And I find it interesting that there are four demons bound there to limit their power right now. I've heard some people say that these angels are probably angels associated with, uh, with the time of Noah and going about and producing, uh, you know, 
going with, with the, the unsaved women of that, of that time and producing giants in the, air, in the land. I don't know, uh, but I know that you know, there, are, there are angels, demons, if you will, that are bound in the Euphrates for a certain time, a certain day, a certain hour to be released to basically be given great power to kill a huge, huge number of the remaining population on the earth. That's the sixth trumpet so far. And then we get to the seventh trumpet. This is kind of awesome. Okay, you go to Revelation 15, or 11, excuse me. And this is a trumpet which is announcing the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and the significant uh, subsequent destruction of all hostile powers at the conclusion of the Armageddon campaign. So basically, nothing happens on the earth. This is a trumpet announcing the end of the age of the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles. This is the time where the trumpet is being sounded. Can I say it like this? It's the election night victory party. Okay? And let me, let me read you this exact quote, okay? How can there be such joy in heaven when the king is not reigning completely yet? Right? Jesus hasn't come down yet. Why are they celebrating? At the headquarters at a successful political campaign on election night, there is joy, even though it will be a while until their candidate is actually installed into office. The joy anticipates a certain result. Can I say it like this? And that, that's honestly that's how quick I want to go through these seven trumpets because I don't want to I don't want to overload you, okay? But I want you to know that the seventh trumpet is a and it's a woe judgment. It's on par with what we just read about these demonic creatures. That's how scary it is to the, to the earth inhabitants. Because you think about this. They have, they have bet the house on the Antichrist. Okay? The Antichrist, as we said, is, is a byproduct of demonic power. Right? He is, a, he is a cheap knockoff of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the devil is a... Not only a corrupter, but he's a counterfeiter. You know, the Bible, we learned, you know, the Antichrist is, is, is a poor man's Lord Jesus, okay? He comes in on a white horse trying to be like the Lord Jesus, right? Who comes later on a white horse. He, he sets up a kingdom, right, on the earth for seven years because he's trying to imitate the thousand-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a poor man's Messiah, if you will. He's a poor knockoff. He has a false prophet, who goes about announcing and preparing his way. False prophet is either a, a poor John the Baptist knockoff or a poor representation of the disciples. Either way, he has, he has set up his kingdom and the people of the earth have refused to repent and they've said, who is like the beast? Who can make war with him? They've cast everything. They've bet the house, if you will. They've, they've mortgaged their home four times trying to bet it all on the Lord Je on on the Lord Jesus' enemy, the Antichrist. And then the trumpet sounds. And I believe the earth is allowed, if you will, then the punishment is they can hear the victory celebration. And they can hear it's coming. His kingdom is coming. His glory is coming. God is going to judge the world. And I believe these, these people who are hiding in the dens of the rocks and asking them to fall upon them, to hide them from the face of the, of the, the Lord, these people who've, who've, who've tried to kill themselves and death is fleeing from them and they've had to suffer these, these horrible things, are now here and you've made the worst investment of your life and you don't even have the opportunity to repent. Judgment is coming. That's a woe. You know, you think about failed coups in history. Think about this, you know, David's son, Absalom, ran a, ran a pretty wicked political campaign against his father, right? David had to flee Jerusalem for his life, right? David had to, to deal with the council of Ahithophel, Right? And God delivered him from that. God, God delivered his, his family um, from, from, from possible dis destruction and Ziklag, right? And all of these things that David went through, and David was suffering during these times, right? And you, you know that there are people who were David's enemies during that time. And they put themselves all in with Absalom. 
And then when David came in and they were getting defeated and they were fleeing for their lives, think of the utter terror and the hopelessness after, after Absalom was killed in the tree, right? As he hung there with darts in, in him, right? Think of, think of that, on a, but think of that on a grander scale. This world had rebelled against God. They had suffered his torments. They had suffered his judgment, but they're still in. They're still in. They're still keeping their chips on the table. They're refusing to repent. They believe the Antichrist is going to pull it out, and they all gather together in Armageddon right there. Then we're going to get to that point where, where they're all trying to just destroy Israel and trying to get God's people and God's saved people off the map, but they're putting in all their chips, and then all of a sudden, the angel blows the trumpet, and they realize... I'm doomed. It's only a matter of time. May I tell you, friends, I don't know if I don't know if you're watching this tonight and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. But before you ever get to that day, okay, before you ever get to that day when you are on the eve of eternal destruction by the physical visual return of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, where he destroys his enemies with the sword out of his mouth, with his very word. Before you get to that day of destruction, can I encourage you, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. You are a sinner and you deserve hell and you deserve the, the judgments of God that fall upon this earth. You deserve to be separated from God for eternity in hell. You deserve to pay your sin debt forever away from Him in hell and in the lake of fire. But the Lord Jesus Christ came because He loved you and the Father gave Him because He loved you so that He could die in your place as your sin offering, die as a curse for you, die to pay your sin debt and, and reconcile you between God and uh, between uh, man and God, if you will. And, and God was able to satisfy that debt through the death of His Son and He raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead so that we could have life eternal and our life could be in His resurrection life. If you come to the Lord Jesus Christ just as you are as a sinner, doomed with no hope, casting yourself on the only hope that you have in eternity, which is the death and the burial and the resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask Him to save you, He will save you and baptize you into Himself. You will never leave His presence. You will be in Jesus Christ forever. You can have hope of eternal life. And you can know that you are not appointed unto wrath, Second or 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us. You will miss the wrath of God. Can I tell you why Christians are not appointed unto a day of wrath? Because in the Lord Jesus Christ, He took all of our wrath. There, in the Lord Jesus Christ, He took all of our sin, He took all of our hell, He took all of our separation, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, when I came to Him and I believed on Him for my salvation... Not only was my sin debt sent away and forgiven and cast behind God's backs, separated as far as the, the east is from the west, if you will, but now I can have peace with God. And I can have access into His presence through the Lord Jesus Christ. You need the Lord Jesus Christ if you're, uh, if you're unsaved tonight. But I warn you, if the Holy Spirit of God is drawing you tonight and saying, you know what, that's you. You're unsaved. You need to be saved. It's all been mental to you. You know Jesus exists, but he's never been yours personally. Then I call on you to repent of your sin and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save you in childlike faith. Believe on him now. Believe on him now. Because if you don't, one of these days, literally, you're going to go from the frying pan into the fire. What's God doing in your heart, Christian? I want to encourage you tonight again. When we read these things, we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, we will be with Him forever. We will miss not only hell, but we will miss the judgments of this world, and we shall forever be with Him. May the Lord encourage you and strengthen you tonight. And may I say, there's still more judgments to come. Now you think about this, and I'm done. They've gone through a lot, these people on the earth. But they have so hardened their hearts toward the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing can get them to repent. Nothing can get them to believe.
They're so far gone. And the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians that because they didn't want to believe the truth, God gave them over to this lie and let them believe a lie of the Antichrist. If you're unsaved tonight and you have that sensitive heart where the Spirit is working in it and it feels tender and you're convicted, respond now. Believe on Him now. Don't wait until you keep saying no and no and keep hardening your heart until you get to a point where finally God doesn't even come around to convict you anymore. And now you are forever remaining appointed under wrath. And what we read of tonight is your fate. If you live long enough in the coming days, I believe, for the Great Tribulation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for your time where we can study and, and just go over a Revelation and see uh, what, is, what is remaining for those who do not know Christ and, Lord, what will be missed by those in Christ. Father, we love you. We ask that you would be with those who uh, listen with us tonight, and I pray that you bless them. And if there be anybody here tonight listening under the sound of my voice who does not know Christ as their Savior, I pray that they would repent of their sins and come to the Lord Jesus Christ in childlike faith, asking Him to save you. Father, strengthen thy church. Build us and uh, just encourage us and, and renew us for the day ahead. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so, so much for your time and your patience. Uh, join us next week on Sunday. We'll be studying more judgments. There's more to come, and it gets pretty crazy. So uh, God bless you. You have a great night. Hi, this is Pastor Ryan. I want to thank you for taking time to watch our video today, and I hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, if you have any particular spiritual questions we can answer or anything we can pray for you about, feel free to contact us. We'd love to try to be a blessing to you. But remember, most importantly, uh, if you're not sure heaven's your home, if if you died today, you're not 100% sure you'd go to heaven, uh, please contact us. We'd like to take the Bible and show you how you can know from Scripture uh, that Christ is yours and that heaven is your eternal home and your sins are forgiven. Thank you so much, and God bless you.